почему неправильно? Нормально. Раз, раз, раз. Работает. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the topic of the lecture today. Do you hear me? Yes, doctor. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes, yes, I hear you. Okay. А, видят у меня не это. Do you hear me, Rania? Yes, doctor, hear you. А я их не слышу. Павлика, почему я их? Я их не должна слышать? Но они меня слышат. Ладно, хорошо. The topic of the lecture is normal microbial flora and its function. Я их не слышу, потому что у меня камера не включена, да? А я их да. не слышу. Почему? Смотри. Сейчас, угу. Вот мой звук слышно, видишь, да? Мой, мой микрофон работает. А их... Я, я их не должна слышать. Я вижу, что кто-то мне пытается ответить. А я их не слышу. Не а? Не, не знаешь? Угу. Нет, нет, мы слушаем. А зачем я должна их слышать? Главное, чтобы они меня слышали. А вот что-то они мне написали в чате. А, вы хей, все. Thank you. So, uh, the topic of lecture is normal microbial flora and the functions of normal microbial flora. Я сейчас не могу показать. Да что ж ты будешь делать? Смотри, теперь не могу этот включить. А почему я не могу теперь включить этот показ? Ну, не могу. Это Два раза? Хорошо. So, normal microbial flora. Спасибо тебе. Спасибо тебе. Вот смотри, вот глючит. Вот. Все. Each microbiotinosis is formed by specific microorganisms. Autochtonus from the Greek autos means own and chton, country, locality. So, allochtonus microbes can be introduced into the composition of this biotinosis from the Greek allos, a line and chton country. So they belong to certain place. Then, biotinosis, a set of animals, plants, and microorganisms that inhabit a land area or reservoir. Microbiotinosis, a community of microbes that live in certain areas of the environment. Uh, each microbiotinosis is formed by specific microorganisms. Autochtones, again from a Greek autos own and chton country. Uh, Allochtones microbes can be introduced into composition of uh, this biotinosis. Uh, Allos from another country. So types of relationships between microbes in symbiosis. So my, in microbiotinose, uh, we are talking about microbes, a lot of species, different, different microbes exist together, like viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and uh, there are very complicated relationships uh, between them. Uh, symbiosis, the joint uh, long, term existence of microorganisms in long-lived communities, uh, symbiosis. And uh, symbiosis forms. Mutualism is a mutually beneficial relationships. Commensalism, only one partner benefits. 
uh, then maybe antagonism uh, forms of extremations can be variable from the banal absorption of smaller species to the release of highly specific products and are toxic to competitors. Uh, microbes, uh, so uh, microbes are able to produce substances, uh, natural substances, those are able to suppress multiplication of another species. Even such uh, complicated relationships are uh, between the strains of microbes, those belong to one species sometimes. Antibiotics from the Greek anti against and bios life. So antibiotics are specific substances, biological. Those are produced by living organisms. In microbes world, antibiotics are produced by fungi, uh, by bacteria, and uh, they are able to suppress the multiplication of another species. The biological meaning and antibiotics are used by human beings for treatment of infectious diseases caused by bacteria or fungi, uh, not viral infections. Uh, you know that uh, viruses are resistant to antibiotics because of uh, in viral particle, there is no any metabolism, no reaction, so no target for action. Uh, the only living cells are sensitive to antibiotics. Living cells such as bacterial cells, fungi cells, and uh, protozoa a little bit. Uh, for protozoa are sensitive to specific chemicals, really. So for treatment of protozoal infections, chemicals are used uh, specific. So the biological meaning of the formation of antibiotics is the suppression of the vital activity of microbes competitors. In particular, the action of fungi antibiotics is usually directed against bacteria and bacterial antibiotics against fungi and even protozoa. So if they live in one community, microbes try to suppress multiplication of another. Bacteriocytes, uh, some microbes are able to produce bacteriocytes. Uh, they are proteins synthesized by 13 bacterial clones. Bacteriocytes are produced just by bacteria, and bacteriocytes cause the death of bacteria of the same or closely related species facilitating competition for vital substrates within a single or closely related species. It was detected that bacteria that belong to one species, some strains are able to produce substances, proteins named bacteriocytes. Those are able to kill bacteria, another strain of bacteria of the same species. Firstly, uh, such substances were detected in uh, Escherichia and uh, Escherichia coli strains. And uh, such uh, bacteriocytes was named uh, colicines. Later, they were detected in species of Staphylococcus genus, and they were named uh, Staphylocytes, and so on. Finally, uh, the general name was developed for these proteins, Bacteriocytes means uh, proteins produced by bacteria against uh, the strain of the same species or closely related. And uh, not all bacteria are able to produce these substances. Uh, uh, it is necessary for bacterial cell to have a special plasmid. Uh, you did study structure of bacterial cell and you know that uh, plasmids are small circular molecules of DNA, not necessarily, uh, but uh, the plasmids contain genes and a uh, way information is encoded about some property. And if bacterial cell has some pl any plasmid, these bacteria have additional property compared with another bacteria. 
So for production of bacterial science, uh, coal plasmid is necessarily, it is named coal uh, because of the first name of bacterial science was coli science. Coli, coli, uh, coal plasmid is necessarily. And uh, another uh, type of relationships is uh, parasitism. So antagonistic symbiosis is uh, a relationship that causes more or less pronounced harm to the owner. The extreme manifestation is uh, parasitism. Pathogenic microbes are parasites of a human's body. And uh, pathogenic microbes are divided into intracellular and extracellular uh, parasites. Intracellular parasites are obligate intracellular parasites. And uh, you know what are they? Viruses. All viruses are obligate intracellular parasites without any exception. And uh, bacteria, some bacteria are intracellular parasites. Obligate intracellular parasites means strict, such as uh, rickettsia and uh, chlamydia. And uh, Positive agent of leprosy, uh, my, my mycobacterium lepra, uh, bacteria not able to multiply on artificial media and uh, they are cultivated just in animal's body. Uh, and uh, extracellular parasites, they are named facultative parasites. Most bacteria and uh, protozoa are able to survive inside the cell. Really, they don't need the host cell for multiplication, but if they are inside the cell, they are able to survive and even multiply. Like a brucella, positive agent of brucellosis, like mycobacteria, positive agent of tuberculosis, like Neisseria, uh, Neisseria genus includes two pathogenic species, Neisseria mingitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. So, mingococci, gonococci are able to survive uh, inside the cell. And uh, so, uh, they are able to survive for a long time. And very often, they cause chronic form of infection because of inside the cell, they are not available for immune system cells, for antibodies and for antibiotics. Uh, now, a normal human microbial flora. Uh, a normal human microbial flora is uh, uh, an average because of uh, really human beings are differ by content of the normal microbial flora. And uh, uh, um, microbes enter a newborn's body immediately after newborns uh, appear, appears and the fetus are still sterile in mother's body. If mother is healthy, is not infected by some microbes, those are able to go through placenta. And the fetus is sterile in mother's body. And uh, uh, newborns immediately uh, due to breathing of air uh, due to contact with hands of the medical staff and then feeding uh, this, the newborn's body will get microbes. And uh, of course, immediately they, all these microbes are recognized by immune system of human beings and uh, multiplication of them is suppressed by immune system. In spite of newborn's immune system is not developed completely. Uh, uh, it's still developing during a few years, and uh, microbes play a role, important role, in stimulation of uh, lymphoid tissue formation. Uh, anyway, multiplication of them is suppressed by immune system, and uh, uh, internal organs and internal liquids are sterile, that's still sterile in healthy human's body. They are the only tissues and organs, those are connected with the environment, have microbes, and they are named normal microbial flora. Uh, uh, very healthy people are exempt 
And if they're healthy, if they have no complaints and any clinical signs or diseases, microbes, those are detected in their body, are named normal microbial flora. But it doesn't mean that everyone, every person has the similar microbes constantly. It depends. Many factors influence on the content of normal microbial flora, such as age, uh, the status of immune system, uh, hygiene rules, and so on. So it depends. But anyway, if microbes are detected in 5% or 20% of healthy people, those were examined, the conclusion was made that these microbes are, belong to normal microbial flora. So mainly, uh, so it's an average. Uh, what microbes are detected on the skin of healthy people? Constantly, I mean constantly, because maybe transient microbial flora uh, that may be temporarily uh, detected on the skin. Yet we, no, we are talking about uh, microbes, those exist constantly on the skin, on many, oh, on many humans body. Staphylococcus are detected. For example, like Staphylococcus epidermidis, Micrococcus, Micrococcus genus, Sarcina genus bacteria are detected. They are common. And uh, Carina bacterium genus, uh, of course, we are not talking about causative agent of diphtheria. A causative agent of diphtheria belong to a Carina bacterium genus. But in this case, we are talking about other species of Carina bacteria, there are a lot of species and they are able to exist on the skin. And uh, is like fungi, candida genus, are detected on the skin, they are able to exist. So, you know, bacteria of Staphylococcus genus, they are spherical cells and uh, they multiply quickly and they located in clusters. Uh, uh, Staphylococci in the smear stained by gram staining. You know them, they are gram positive cocci located in clusters. Uh, then, uh, respiratory microbial flora. In the upper respiratory tract, upper respiratory tract, uh, it is possible to detect Streptococcus genus bacteria, non pathogenic Neisseria. Uh, of course, except Mingakoki and Gonokoki, Carinobacterium, genus bacteria, like Carinobacterium xerosis, Carinobacterium ulcerans, Carinobacterium pseudodiphtericum, Staphylococcus, genus uh, species Bacteroides. Uh, just upper respiratory tract has microbes. Uh, trachea, bronchi, and lungs are normally sterile. Uh, Carina bacterium genus bacteria, they are named rods and uh, uh, they are a little bit bulged. So, and uh, causative agent of gastrointestinal tract uh, starts from the oral cavity. Of course, it's not sterile because uh, food is not sterile and water. And in the oral cavity, there are a lot of microbes including bacteria and fungi and even protozoa sometimes. And uh, it includes streptococci, uh, streptococci uh, streptococcus genus bacteria should exist in large amount. Uh, in large amount, uh, approximately from 30 to 60% of all my microbes, of all microbial flora of oral cavity, uh, streptococcus genus uh, bacteria, again, non pathogenic uh, uh, Pay attention that we are talking about non pathogenic species. Pathogenic species don't belong to normal microbial flora. If pathogenic species are detected in human body, and uh, uh, it even that this person has no any complaints and clinical signs, uh, he is not healthy, he is not normal. Uh, we are talking about carrier state. Such uh, people are named carriers of pathogenic bacteria. Uh, we are talking about non-pathogenic species. 
Streptococcus mitis, Streptococcus mutans, Streptococcus salivaris, species of Streptococci, those are able to exist in oral cavity. Then bacteroid species bacteria, bifida bacterium, genus bacteria, fusa bacterium, genus bacteria, uh, leptospira, spiral bacteria, again non pathogenic species, Borrelia, non pathogenic, Trepanema, you know Trepanema pallidum, positive agent of syphilis, but in oral cavity other species are detected, such as Trepanema denticola, Trepanema microdentium, and other species, non pathogenic Trepanema, Actinomycetes, genus bacteria, fungi of the genus Candida, not exactly in every person, but sometimes they are detected in a small amount in oral cavity. And uh, very rarely, but sometimes protozoa are detected, non pathogenic species of entamoeba genus and uh, trichomonas genus. Uh, they don't cause amoebiasis and trichomonosis. They are able to exist in oral cavity sometimes. Uh, there are more anaerobic bacteria than aerobic ones. Uh, it, it doesn't mean again they, that all these bacteria, all these microbes are detected in every person. It depends. There are variations in the content of normal microbial flora. Uh, microbial flora of stomach. Uh, Lactobacillus. Uh, in the stomach, they, 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 there are no favorable conditions for uh, microbes because of pH is acid and uh, there are enzymes necessarily for digestion. So uh, just a few uh, uh, big microbes are detected. Lactobacillus are able to survive sometimes and single gram negative bacteria. Of course, microbes go from oral cavity to the stomach and uh, most of them die, they are not able to survive. And uh, uh, the only Helicobacter genus bacteria are able to survive, exactly Helicobacter pylori, they are detected because of, they are able to change pH to alkaline and uh, they are able to survive in the stomach. They are detected in healthy people. And uh, I hope you remember, that they are participated, uh, like one of the factor in gastritis formation, then ulcer formation, because of they are able to survive. Then small intestine, uh, microbial flora of the small intestine, mm, bifidobacterium genus bacteria, sometimes clostridium genus bacteria, eobacterium, lactobacillus, and anaerobic cocci. Uh, then large intestine, colon microbial flora uh, includes, of course, there are uh, anaerobic conditions, means there is no molecular oxygen, no O2. So uh, anaerobic microorganisms, anaerobic microorganisms are able to uh, multiply to exist without molecular oxygen. And so there are favorable conditions for such uh, bacteria in uh, uh, colon and they should prevail anaerobic strict anaerobic microorganisms. And uh, in large amount uh, bacteria are detected of bifida bacterium genus bifida bacteria, lacta bacillus genus bacteria, aobacteria, then uh, escherichia, they are faculty uh, clostridium genus bacteria and and bacteroids. They are anaerobic microorganisms. And uh, facultative anaerobic bacteria are detected too, such as facultative anaerobic bacteria are able to survive in both conditions in presence of molecular oxygen and in absence of molecular oxygen because of they have uh, all enzymes. Uh, those are necessarily for surviving in presence of O2. In presence of O2, bacteria are able 
to produce hydrogen peroxide uh, due to reaction with O2. And this substance, hydrogen peroxide, is toxic substance for the cells. And uh, if bacteria have no enzyme for destruction of uh, hydrogen peroxide, they die. What anaerobic microorganisms, they have no enzymes for hydrogen peroxide destruction, so they are not able to survive in presence of molecular oxygen. Then you will study physiology of bacteria and you will realize uh, why. So facultative anaerobic bacteria, they have the full set of enzymes, so they are able to survive without O molecular O2 and in presence of O2. Uh, in less amount, so we are talking about microbial flora of colon, and in less amount, bacteria of Staphylococcus genus are detected than Pseudomonas aeruginosa species, and some protozoa like amoeba, sometimes antamoeba genus are able to exist, some viruses, less amount. Uh, this is colon, and there are a lot of microbes inside. Bifidobacterium genus bacteria, they have this shape, they are branching uh, bacteria, lactobacillus, and uh, now uh, another organs, microbial flora, uh, orogenic microbial flora. Uh, uh, a small amount of microbes. Of course, kidney should be sterile. Kidney and blood uh, should be sterile, and uh, sometimes it is necessary to check is the urine sterile or not in blood. So if the urine is taken uh, from the blood by using a sterile catheter, it should be sterile in healthy people. So, and uh, in the lower uh, tract, staphylococci are detected, exactly Staphylococcus epidermidis species bacteria, and then maybe non-hemolytic streptococci, carina bacteria are able to exist, and sometimes candida are detected on mucosa of urogenital tract. And sometimes mycobacteria are detected, bacteria those belong to mycobacterium genus, but of course, uh, not causative agent of tuberculosis in normal microbial flora. In other species, Mycobacterium smegmatis sometimes is detected on mucosa. Uh, they are able to exist like normal microbial flora. Uh, and uh, internal organs should be sterile, lungs, liver, spleen, uh, and uh, uh, fluid. Uh, fluids, internal fluids such as blood should be sterile, lymph is sterile, of course lymph nodes should be sterile, and uh, cerebrospinal fluid should be sterile in healthy people. And uh, of course we are not going to use internal organs for microbiological diagnosis, uh, the only if uh, the, we are talking about post-mortal diagnosis. If the diagnosis was not detected, was not confirmed during the life of patient, after the death of patient, for post-mortal diagnosis, it's possible to use any internal organs. But we are talking about life patients, so uh, we are not going to take internal organs, but it is possible to take blood for uh, examination of blood to check is blood sterile or not, it should be sterile. Uh, the blood should be taken from the vein by sterile syringe and it should be inoculated on liquid medium and uh, the medium should be cultivated at thermostat during seven days and we are looking for presence of bacteria in blood. Then lymph nodes content is very good specimen it's not traumatic procedure to take a uh, content of lymph nodes by using a sterile syringe. And uh, if microbes are detected in the blood or in lymph nodes, uh, the conclusion is made that the patient is not healthy. There are microbes. And uh, cerebrospinal fluid 
liquor, synonymous liquor, uh, in, uh, in case of meningeal symptoms, if patient has meningeal symptoms, it is necessarily to exam cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, we should do puncture of spinal cord. It's traumatic procedure. Uh, anyway, it is necessary to do for proving of diagnosis. Some microbes are able to cause, such as meningococci, if they cause meningitis. Leptospira are able to cause meningal symptoms. In that case, cerebrospinal fluid is used. Uh, Oh, we are going to check, is it sterile or not? Uh, uh, and, but if we are going to exam ah, the specimen from human body for detection of pathogenic microbes, realize how many microbes are in the oral cavity, on the skin, uh, in the digestive tract. Feces often is sent to the laboratory for uh, diagnosis of intestinal drugs infections. And there are a lot of microbes, representatives of normal microbial flora. Uh, the sputum is sent, uh, any specimen from oral cavity is sent to the laboratory in case of upper respiratory tract infections. And uh, if it is wound infection, the uh, pass from the wound, the liquid from the wound is sent to the laboratory, again, there are a lot of microbes. So we have difficulties in diagnosis. Uh, sometimes if we know that in the species there are uh, representatives of normal microbial flora and that uh, every specimen is sent to the laboratory with presumptive diagnosis. And the task is uh, to find exactly presumptive causative agent in between. So it is difficult. And so uh, then you will study how it is possible to inoculate specimen to divide microbes and to get well isolated colonies to find exactly causative agent. Uh, now we'll, I will make a break, 10 minutes break, and then we will continue by using of the same link. Okay. Okay, doctor. So in 10 minutes, now it is 8.33. Uh, At 9.33, uh, the lecture will be continued by the same link. OK. 